Terry Reed, everybody. I don't know who that is. I know who Tara Reed is. Terry Reed. Hey there, Billy, Bilbo Baggins. Just wondering if you ever heard of Terry Reed. Uh, he was offered by Jimmy Page to be the front man to his new Yardbirds. Yardbirds band and said that he had a couple of guys that would be better for the job. Robert Plant and John Bonham. I love this story and I love Terry's music. If you hadn't heard his stuff, check out Seed of Memory. Uh, to be treated right and Dean are my favorites. I guess there's a documentary, Super Lungs, is coming out soon. Anyways, I've never heard you mention him before and thought it'd be right up your alley. Oh, well, that's amazing. You know, there's a bunch of those kinds of fucking stories. Like somebody sent me one recently. I think I might have talked about it, about a guy who filled in for Ringo Starr for like two weeks at the height of Beatlemania. Ringo had like tonsillitis or something. And of course, it was the early 60s, so it was damn near fatal. You know what I mean? He had, to, he had to like fucking go to some witch doctor or some shit to get cured. So they had this other guy sit in and he went from complete nobody to being totally famous and every chick in the world that couldn't fuck Lennon, McCartney or fucking Harrison was jumping on his dick. And then the whole fucking thing ended two weeks later and no one knew who he was. And he was just like, what the fuck was that? Um. And I guess, you know, he didn't want to make a documentary out of it. But uh, recently I was I was going through Twitter and they showed a picture of him. This great picture. It's great for me looking at it to, to get a sense of what it was like after he was in the Beatles. Probably crushing for him. He was sitting in a um, at an airport waiting for a uh, a flight. And he was like the only guy there just sitting there by himself with his Beatles haircut. They made him get a Beatles haircut and wear like a fucking Ringo style suit. And, uh, and then he was just like, well, what, the, what the fuck happened? Within two years, he was broke and out of the music business. Um, they just kind of lifted him up and gave him the old right there, Fred, right back down. Um, kind of incredible. So I always find that amazing when there was like people that were, uh, you know, in bands. In fact, I remember a long time ago, I was trying to develop this script, but of course I've just, I have too much ADD to try to get these fucking ideas off the ground. But I had an idea for, a, uh, for a movie and then they ended up kind of doing the movie already with, uh, with one of those guys from the office. But my idea was, you know, I used to watch those, um, those behind the musics and there was always somebody, Oh fuck. Here comes the itis. Um, Oh, that burger's taking me down. Um, there, there's, uh, there's always that person early on. You know, they're like in ACDC and they decide to quit and go to school or they get married. And then the band goes on to make it. And I always thought, like, whatever happened to that fucking guy? He got to spend the rest of his life. I don't give a shit what he does. He could be a fucking brain surgeon. People are still like, dude, you quit ACDC? Oh, my God. What a fucking loser. For the rest of your life. So I had this idea for movies. It was basically, it was about a guy that quit a band and went on to make it. And it was all about his, I think I wrote it for Adam Sandler because it was the late nineties when I was writing this thing. And it just, it was a fucking mess. I was never able to land it. And basically what happened was he ends up meeting the devil in a bar and he sells his soul to go back in time to not quit the band so he stays in the band. He ends up not meeting the love of his life. And then he ends up discovering that the reason why the band made it was because he quit and the right person got into the band. So he lost his the love of his life and the band didn't make it. He fucked them all up and uh, and he was going to go to hell. And uh, interestingly enough, that's where my script went to hell. Because <laughs> I, the way I got out of it was then he didn't give a shit. He was going to hell. He fucking went out of his way to find the fucking guy who should have been in the band. So then the band makes it. And uh, because he did that selfless thing, there was a loophole in selling your soul. Real Disney fucking ending. And he gets he doesn't have to sell his soul. He gets back with his wife. And then they go to the concert in the end. Oh, this is how I should have done it. And he's like, you know what, man? I wouldn't trade being with you, sweetie, for all the fucking free pussy in the world. The end. Right? And they kind of made a movie like that. Um, or enough of it. Uh, either way, I don't give a fuck, right? 
So anyways, getting back to this Terry Reed guy, uh, what was I going to say? Um, that sounds very interesting. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to fucking put this guy in right now to look him up. Terry Reed, man, that sounds like a country guy. Or is that Jerry Reed? A eastbound or down, loaded up and fucking. Um, wife's, you know, he said that one night when he was just sick of singing that song in front of those fucking church going racing, racist fucking country music fans. Oh, God, they love talking about family. I'll tell you right now, if I wasn't white, I would not hang around with any white people that talked about the family values. The second white people start talking about that shit, you just know it's, you know what's underneath that. Good family values, you know. Founding fathers. All right, let's, let's, let's not get too political here, Bill.